Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome PhD candidate, 2016 Tillman Scholar, and U.S. Army veteran, Karen Gallagher. So, a month ago, a veteran walks into my office, an Army veteran, a medic, standing in my doorway. And he looks at me and he says, something's wrong. Something's different about the way I learn, about the way my brain works. I went to VA and they wrote me a prescription, but I need help. He had just gotten back um, into college after serving in the military. Um, and he had had a few concussions while he was there and really didn't notice the difference until he entered college. His story is the same story that I heard a couple weeks before that from a Marine veteran. And it's the same story I heard in a phone call from another veteran last week. And I promise you, that is the same story I have sitting in my email inbox right now. And I relate to these stories. When I was 18 years old, I was a senior at an all-girls Catholic high school. I was about to graduate, and I was headed for the same future as everybody else in my class, a lockstep, homogenous future that I didn't necessarily felt like I chose or I really understood. I didn't know what to do. So I did what no girl in my private all-girls Catholic school had ever done. I joined the Army. And I know what you're thinking. Let's see, you wanted to escape homogenous and lockstep. So you joined the Army. Maybe didn't think it through, but I literally ran away to join the Army. My parents weren't thrilled at first. My father actually said, you know, your mom's pretty upset about this Army thing, so let me get her over the Army thing, and we'll tell her about the Airborne later. <laughs> so um, actually, despite the seemingly homogenous lockstep environment of the military, this is where I found my mission. This is where I figured things out. This is where I learned how to lead. So this is where I kind of figured it out. And after Desert Storm, I, I got back in country, you know, my turn to refill the pitcher, walk up to the bar, throw my military ID on the, on the bar because despite my statuesque figure, I looked about 12. <laughs> and sitting there was this older gentleman watching me. And he asked me, so did you just get back from Desert Storm? And I said, yes. So he stood up and he came toward me and he extended his hand and he shook my hand and he said, thank you, welcome home, and I'm buying that pitcher of beer. Because when I got back from Vietnam, nobody said thank you, nobody said welcome home, and that's not happening to you guys. And I was blown away that this stranger connected only to me only through our service and separated by decades, felt the need to protect the next generation of veterans. And he wanted to make sure my path was easier than his. He was called to service after service in just a moment. So I got out of the Army, started college, and I was lost once again. In the military, I had a mission. I knew where I stood. In the seemingly chaotic environment of college, I had no idea. I was lost. I didn't relate to these 18-year-olds who I thought had a worldview about that big. And I would go sometimes a week or two without speaking to a soul on campus. But I was strong, and I had experience, and I drew on that experience, and I got through college. I got my degree. I actually got two. I got a bachelor's and a master's degree, and went on to practice speech-language pathology. And years later, when I became clinical faculty at a university, I got to see this surge, this influx of veterans, the next generation of veterans, coming on to the college campus. And there was so much excitement and hope, and so many of them were having such great success. But there were some who were struggling. There were some who were not doing well, and that was not okay with me. I wanted to help make the path for the next generation of veterans easier than mine. So at the age of, we'll just say, 40-ish, I went back to get my PhD, 
with a focus on cognition and military veterans. And I entered my PhD program and, like the other first-year doctoral students, hoped against hope that I would get at least 10 people to sign up for my first-year project, my little study. We all put on our ads, and some people were getting 5, 10, 15 people. Within two hours of my ad going out, I had 60 veterans responding. And they were saying, something's wrong. Something's different about the way that I learn. I went to VA, I got a prescription, but I need help. I was on the right path, and I knew it. And so now, every day, I get to sit across the table from this next generation of veterans, and I get to figure out how to make their path easier by showing them where their strengths and weaknesses are with their learning and their memories and helping them figure out ways to maximize this. And I want this to be the model on all university campuses, that there's a center not just dedicated to GI Bill benefits, but to the whole veteran, their cognition, their cultural transition, their mental health, and all the supports that they need to be as successful as they can be. I want us all to thank the next generation of veterans, to say welcome home, and to buy them that proverbial pitcher of beer. I'm Karen Gallagher. I'm a US Army Airborne veteran. 